Hi guys, I'm Lulu with Lulu's Art Creations and today we are going to uh, create a celestial rabbit which is no longer a celestial rabbit. It is a year of the rabbit drawing that's kind of farm to market. So last year I created a celestial tiger, a celestial jellyfish, and an owl. <laughs> and so I guess I've been holding on to that for an entire year. And so I was like, I'm going to create a celestial rabbit this year. Well, as I started getting into the actual drawing process of this, that, that changed. <laughs> like many things when you have ADHD, it always, always changes. Whenever you are starting your drawing, you want to do some sketches and it's, it's good to have about two to three different designs before you settle in on one. Um, this way you can figure out what your composition is, the flow of the drawing, and you know, just really work out your idea for it. So for this one, I didn't show my sketching process. I did about two or three different ones and I kind of settled on this one and just went with it. So once you have a rough idea of what you're wanting to draw, I like to kind of refine it. And it depends on the drawing, but occasionally I will do this step multiple times. And what I'm basically doing is I'm trying to get the different curves, the shapes, kind of refining the, the object that I'm going to be drawing. Like if it's a flower, I'm going to sit there and draw you know, more of the shapes of the, the, the petals of the flower, or in this case, the rabbit, I'm going to try and draw, you know, the legs and the ears, trying to figure out like the position of the ears and whatnot. So that way, whenever I get into the inking of it, I, you know, I know what I'm inking. I don't have, I don't have to guess on that. Now, occasionally I do make myself guess, but that's just because I couldn't quite figure out how I wanted it to look when I was in the sketching phase and I figured I would know better once I started inking it and I could see the image coming alive. So for this drawing, um, I wanted to draw my bunnies with shorter fur and so I wanted to illustrate that with my ink work and the way that I usually do that is you know I have shorter lines in my ink work and then I'm going around the I'm basically using the, the short lines to define the shape of the rabbit and then to add in shadows now I don't want to add too many details into this because I didn't really because I have the intention of coloring it and I wanted to have more negative space so that the color and the line work don't get lost or get muddied uh, when I get into that phase.
I started drawing the foot, the bunny's foot, and I realized I don't really know what a bunny's foot looks like, so I had to go and look that up, and I don't, I don't think they have the little pads on it, which I could be wrong again, because I looked up a reference, but I'm not entirely sure if that was a correct reference now that I'm thinking about it. Now that I'm in the editing phase and I've completely done this entire drawing, I should probably go look that up. probably one of my favorite things to do and I've been inking for a very very long time uh, it's probably like one of the things that I I guess gravitated to first as an artist was inking and then you know I wanted to do more color stuff which I, I really do enjoy painting as well um, but it is a different mindset uh, I think inking and kind of doing the high details like this is default for me um, whenever I would just want to do like a fun, relaxing drawing, I kind of default will go into just like inking because that's what I, you know, I mostly did when I was younger is I would, you know, do pen and ink because at the time I didn't have a tablet. I just had paper and the easiest thing to do with paper is inking. And plus I was really into comics. So I was like, Ooh, I want to be a comic book artist, which, Hey, you never know. I might do that this year. Uh -huh, uh -huh, foreshadowing. <laughs> So now this is where I decided to change my mind on the celestial rabbit. So I started drawing um, some vegetables going around because I was kind of feeling in a you know a little farmer's market. I have a garden outside that's quite enormous, and we started growing some carrots here recently and some cabbage and onions. So I kind of wanted to, I don't know, expand on that and see what I could do. So here I'm trying to find the uh, ellipse tool. And uh, Clip Studio Paint has a really cool uh, ellipse tool. I can make it either solid, I can make it um, an outline, or um, I think a selection tool. I'm not entirely sure. I haven't tried the other one. I'm being a bad artist. But um, so anyways, I line it up as best as I can. This is the only thing I kind of have a downside with uh, Clip Studio Paint is that in Photoshop, they actually have like nice little snap tools and you can see where everything snaps to. Um, Clip Studio doesn't really, and that, that does bother me. Now, I use both programs. Um, I u mostly use uh, Clip Studio to do my paintings and whatnot because I like how the their program is for the pen. So whenever I'm, I'm drawing, it, it has a better, like, flow. It feels more natural to me, whereas in Photoshop it doesn't. But Photoshop does have, you know, they do have some nicer features here and there. Like, I like to print in Photoshop. Um, I think that their their programming for the printer is better. Um, I do like lining things up in Photoshop, whatnot, but I can mostly do all of that in Clip Studio Paint. So, it just depends on what your needs are for, for it. And as you can tell here, I am, this is real time, uh, painting. So this is what, you know, it takes me about this much time to make like a, a little, a little radish, a little radish boy. This is just his leaf. And then once you like draw it the first time and you like kind of understand how it's supposed to look, you're after that, you're just like, okay. Yeah, this is this is how it's supposed to look. And so then drawing it the rest of the time, it, it it's easier, but also you have to be careful because you can get a little sloppy with it. Because you're like, yeah, this this totally looks fine. This is great. This is how it looks. And you like look at the one that you did last, and then the one that you did first, and the one that you did last is like super just like simple lines, and the one that you did first is like, yeah, taking my time and blah blah blah.
Now the head or the uh, leaves of the carrot were interesting because they're so tiny in details and I didn't necessarily want to draw every single little shape and line of that so I kind of did a general uh, like idea of where the the leaves are so you'll see if you kind of notice like I have like little little dollops or of where the the um, leaves are but it's not the entire leaf and stem and everything like that it just kind of gives you an, an illusion or an idea of it and of course the look this was like super fun to draw because it's like super like delicate and flowy and you're just you know all you're doing is adding some curves uh, for the ruffles and then lines coming down towards the center where the stalk is to kind of give it that um, To try and give it some of the frill, you know, of, like laciness because lettuce is kind of lacy. It's kind of pretty So instead of drawing um, all of the fruit around the entire circle, I drew about halfway through the fruit, which didn't really take me that long to do. I thought it was going to take me way longer. And it was probably a couple of hours doing that. I was sitting here jamming out. So once I uh, have all of the different fruits and vegetables laid out the way that I wanted, I just duplicated it, flipped it uh, horizontally, and I think I flipped it vertically too so that it, it wasn't, um, it would match better. And then just, you know, rotated it, tilted it the right way that I wanted it, and then came through and erased um, the ones that are overlapping. All right, so once all of the fruits is mashing together, so now I need to, you know, clean up the rabbit and whatnot, and make sure that I wanted the rabbit to be over the uh, fruits and vegetables. Sorry, vegetables, not fruits. There's no fruits in here. I don't know why I said fruits. Um, there's not even tomatoes in here, so there is no fruits. I don't, I don't know what's wrong with me. Anyways, <laughs> I make myself laugh sometimes, and it's, it's quite sad. Okay, so now is where I'm gonna get into the coloring phase. Now on this here, I forgot to record myself actually like starting to color um, the items. So then you'll you'll kind of see like everything has a base color, which I pretty much is sticking with a base color. I wasn't wanting to get too detailed in the coloring of this. I wanted the, the outline to stand out more so. 
So here I'm just jumping around, painting all the different um, beets, radish, carrots, and then I'm going to uh, start painting all of the different uh, leaves of each one, which I should have done that before I started coloring the stems of, like, as you can see, the beets here, because uh, I had to erase part of that and then go back over it again, which, yay, double, double painting. But, you know, that happens sometimes. You don't really... You don't know everything when you get into a painting. You just you start going, and then you realize, oh yeah, this is not this is not the right way to do this. And so the next time, hopefully, you remember that. <laughs> I never remember, but hopefully you do, <laughs> and then you will, you know, not do that because it it can be a waste of time. But you know, whatever, it's not big of a deal. All right, and I forgot to record the shading. All I did was do like an overlay with um, like a magenta type color, and then I just kind of did like blocking of the shadows. So, but here it is. Thank you so much for uh, coming along this, you know, first of the year journey. Uh, hopefully the next ones that I have coming out will be entertaining. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think about everything. Uh, let me know what other pieces you'd like to see and or other types of videos or if this video is terrible or, or et cetera, et cetera. <laughs>